Hey everybody, welcome back to the Elegant Oxford. I want to start today's video by thanking all of you personally and wholeheartedly for your patience during my YouTube sabbatical. But there's actually a pretty good reason. For those who don't know, my wife is pregnant with our third baby. It's a boy. And she's just been extremely sick and I've had to reprioritize my time and focus on other parts of the Elegant Oxford that have really helped me to manage everything a little bit better. But the good news is I'm back and I'm so proud of today's video. I really think you're gonna like it. To help supplement the time I've been away, I've actually been doing Amazon live streams every Friday at noon where I've been able to interact with you live and in real time working on different pairs, including pairs people send in so that they can watch their shoes be restored right then and there. And for those who are interested in doing that, please join me every Friday at noon. It's a weekly forum where I look at different shoe topics, I demonstrate different patinas, different shines, and we can talk and interact in real time. So I'll leave all that information down below. And once again, thank you all for being so patient. I really am glad I got to do today's video. I think you're really, really gonna like it. As always, visit theelegantoxford.com for all your Saphir and shoe care needs. And enjoy the video. I'll see you next time. Today I'm going to answer the age-old question, can you turn a black dress shoe into another color? Now I get this question all the time and I totally understand why. Black dress shoes are important to have at least one, but they're not very versatile, so you find them in thrift shops, on eBay, secondhand for a low price. So the average enthusiast wants to get it, transform it, and then have an incredible pair of shoes for less money. Now, years before I started the Elegant Oxford, I actually tried it and it didn't work for me. And now I know it's because the shoes were corrected grain leather, but I'm gonna give it a try on these Allen Edmonds McAllisters that I found on eBay for only $10. And there's a reason why they were only $10. And it's because this is how they were sold. This is the set. And I mean, obviously they're not even the same. Uh, they're the same model, same size, same brand, except one is obviously walnut and one is black. So I think they were both floor models and then after years they weren't used and they sold them just like this. I'm pretty convinced they still have the Allen Edmonds stickers down here and uh, it looks like they came from a store. The first thing we're gonna do is use a proper shoe tree so that the entire shoe is filled out and when I use the acetone and the dye, everything's just fine. So these are the stock laces from the factory, which are okay. Just gonna get rid of them. You know, I prefer flat laces, but let's get these out first. This is gonna be tight though, I can tell you right now. Alrighty, there we go. Little tight, but still good. And these shoe trees are just wonderful. They really fill out the shoe perfectly, the right shape. Found them at a thrift store, I've had them for years, and I just absolutely love them for repairs and for dye work. So Allen Edmonds does use a spray on factory finish. I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. It's opaque, meaning it's not see-through. They use it for uniformity and to cover blemishes and all that. But on a black shoe, it really doesn't do much, okay? It's just really to make it shiny and to make it look good. But underneath this leather immediately is gonna be black leather. And my job is to get that black leather and use acetone to the point where it lightens up and then I can, <laughs> I can introduce some pigment. So the shoe looks good. I mean, uh, obviously it's a factory first, so no huge blemishes here. So it's a good stock shoe. Um, I was really just tempted to dye the walnut one uh, black and just go from there, but uh, I gotta try it. I have to try at least once in my career to get this black shoe to another color. I might fail spectacularly. Uh, I might make a fool out of myself, but we're gonna give it the good old try. So let's get that acetone and get started. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, just be really patient when using acetone. It's gonna take a while and uh, just try to get as much of that factory finish off as you can. Okay, so we have the bare black leather underneath. As you can see, it already looks a lot smoother and a lot better, honestly. So I think we're ready to go strip the shoe and to continue. Okay, so at this point, you're going to realize acetone is simply not strong enough. I mean, it works for 99.9% .9 of all the jobs you're going to do, except for black. It's that one color that's just not going to go without a fight. So you need something stronger than acetone. 
Um, you can use Avel by Hussard. Shameless plug, I do sell it at theeleganoxford.com, but it smells terrible, but it is stronger. I mean, it is a stain remover and it'll strip the color right off. The only thing is that there's not a lot of it. It doesn't come in that huge can like acetone does. So uh, that is just one of your options. We have Decapont by Saphir, which is another type of acetone-like product that is stronger, but it comes in a small bottle. But if you really just wanna get down to the nitty gritty, I think one of the easiest solutions is to use bleach and water, which is really simple. You can find bleach anywhere, Walmart, Target, really doesn't matter. So it's one third bleach and then two thirds water. And that's really gonna get the color off. And guess what? It's been working. So I did actually start it before filming the video. And uh, yeah, look at that, it's working. We're getting a lot of the color coming off. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's just continue and I'll come back once once everything's ready to go. Okay, you know what? Ugh, some demonstrations probably in order. Wet it like that and then just start to remove it, okay? It's not gonna evaporate as quickly as acetone. You're gonna see right off the bat. So it is gonna wet the shoe a little more, but it's coming off. So I got to the point where acetone wasn't removing anything anymore. And the bleach and the water solution is just really gonna help get everything off. Okay, so this is obviously gonna take longer than most jobs. So just be really, really patient. Just rub it like that, okay? There we go. Coming off. And this is actually working a little better than I thought it would. So just keep going. And it's time for that time lapse. The hardest part about working with bleach is that the shoe's gonna get soaked. It's not like acetone, it doesn't evaporate immediately. So you're gonna have to do multiple sessions where you let the shoe dry and then you go back and forth. So be extra patient with this step, but it's really the most important step. All right, well, we got a lot further than I thought we were gonna get. But this actually took a lot of uh, bleach and water and sunlight. So I would place the shoe outside in the sun all day. I mean, we've had rain, but uh, we had, you know, we'd have four or five hours of sunlight and I'd put them outside and this kind of helped. So I know it doesn't look nice. Uh, this isn't supposed to look beautiful right now. Um, as you can see, some of the areas along the pinking remained black. I don't know if I'm gonna go through the trouble and removing all that. I am gonna be doing a burnish, so those areas are gonna be dark anyway. But overall, um, looking looking good. I mean, hey, <laughs> better than I thought, uh, but I do understand it doesn't look beautiful. Okay, so next we're gonna remove the black edge dressing right here. Um, I've done a little bit here and it's brown underneath. I know it doesn't look super brown right now, but I'm gonna be making sure it's dyed and everything. So we're just gonna remove that color. Um, you can use acetone, which is pretty simple. That's the first method that I recommend. And uh, you'll see it's, it's pretty easy. So what you do is you spray some acetone on your fingers like that, and then you just go back and forth and as you can see the color is already coming right off there you go which is a pretty simple method acetone's pretty strong or the other is using sandpaper right very fine grit and just this might be too too fine it's 2500 which is definitely too fine but I don't want to be removing anything so this is really to smooth it out yeah, it's not working too well, but it does feel <laughs> really smooth, definitely. So I'm gonna be using that later to go back over. If you wanna leave it black, you can too. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, okay? A little bit of acetone and, oh, I got some on the shoe, but it doesn't matter. There we go. All right, nice and easy. Just keep going back and forth. Yeah, there we go. It's actually working. Now, Alan Edmonds, well, it's brown, obviously, but this top, the top layer, which is the actual, um, the welt is black. So you're gonna get black and then brown. That's normal. That's usually how it is on a lot of pairs of Alan Edmonds. And we're 
wore off. Not difficult, see? You can just keep on doing it. And it will take a little bit of time, but overall it is not a hard job. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, so it does, it does feel rough to the touch. But if I use really fine sandpaper, it's gonna feel like glass when it's all said and done, okay? Alrighty. Yeah, feels super, super glassy. All right. So, another table shaking. Yeah, feels great. So, just continue on and we're gonna do the entire shoe. And then afterward, we'll, I'll either keep trying to remove this, this black here, or I'll just start dyeing uh, using leather dye, okay? So, so far so good. Okay, you know what happened? I actually had to start completely over. From the last frame to this one, you'll notice the shoe is a little bit more yellow tinted. <laughs> I decided to go with brown. It just wasn't looking the way I wanted. Uh, so I had to restrip the entire shoe and it took a long time. But <laughs> I'm gonna go with, I decided not to use any black and the brown was just too dark. It just looked, it didn't look right. Ugly shoes. So I'm going to do a, a base of oxblood and then I'm going to use a dark burgundy to accent the shoe and then you'll see some nice colors. More like a, a plum color. You'll have some reds and then some burgundies and the reds will be popping through. That's kind of what I'm going to do. We're going to start with this base oxblood color and I'm just going to use the pom-pom applicator. This part's actually pretty quick. Okay, this is not a lot to do here. We're just adding that base layer before we start adding the, the deeper colors. Okay, so let's just start adding it now. Okay, you'll notice since the leather is so um, stripped down that we're getting an immediate, I mean, the, the color is going straight into the shoe. It's a very nice reddish color. It's got some burgundy tones in here though. Okay, now it looks darker than it's gonna dry because it's just wet. and. Obviously when something's wet, it appears darker, but it's actually a nice color, okay? Alrighty, let's just go over the entire shoe. Now I'm using a pom-pom applicator as opposed to my finger or a brush because those little micro hairs, they're very good at getting everywhere and that's what I want, okay? There's a lot of pinking and a lot of deep spaces. I kind of want to get everywhere. Alrighty, all right. Yeah, it's dying pretty nicely. Okay, let's just go over these areas. Okay, I'm liking this color. It's a, a new mixture here. It does have red tones in it, but I am seeing more burgundy getting in there, and I kind of like that. It wasn't on purpose, it just kind of mixed that way. My ratio was just a little, a little different than last time. Okay, but it, it is gonna dry a little lighter than, than it looks now. Yeah. It looks very nice. I like the color we're seeing down here. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the tongue right now. All right, let's get the tongue. Now, when it dr it's drying now, it's already looking a lot lighter. That's, believe it or not, that's what I want. I want a light base, and then when I go over with the darker, the darker burgundy tone, it's gonna give it a nice, a nice layering effect and that's kind of what I want. Okay, but so far, so good. I darkened the concoction I already had by adding drops of purple and dark brown, believe it or not. And that's gonna give me a, a darker, richer color for the accents.
Okay, so immediately you're going to notice the first issue or the first of many challenges that come with using an airbrush. Like I've mentioned in other videos, they're great for shading. I think they're unbeatable for shading. Uh, but one of the weaknesses is that a lot of the leather dye doesn't cure directly into the shoe. So this yellowish haze, this golden haze you see everywhere, that's leather dye that hasn't been cured. Okay, so before you continue adding layers, you're gonna have to cure this dye. Now, um, I'm gonna remove that excess using a horsehair brush. All you do is brush it off and it'll come off, then you continue adding more layers. So it's gonna look less burnished in a second, okay? And the friction of the brush really helps to remove all that excess, okay? All that uncured dye. <clears throat> and it won't get everything off. A lot of the polishing process when we're done is going to be doing that. But for now, let's just get off as much as we can. As you can see, it's already looking better. So let's just add a few more layers and kind of get the final touches going. Okay, second layer of burnishing done. Getting that golden haze again, but that's not a problem. I wanted to make sure everything was properly shaded before we start shining. Okay, nice plum color. Let's get at it again. Now, if there are areas you wanna re-lighten, let's say you went too hard on the burnishing and you wanna lighten them up. Saphir Gentle Cleanser. It's the gentlest cleanser we have. It's gonna do you good, okay? Just remove a little bit of that dye on top and get you where you wanna be. That's completely fine. You can use acetone, but that might take you overboard and you're gonna have to re-add re the, the burnishing. I see that on video it looks a little lighter than it is in person. It's a little darker in person, but uh, we're looking good. So we're gonna add some color with some shoe cream and then we're gonna start the shine. But so far, I'm, I'm really liking how it's looking. Okay, we actually have a new, we have a new Saphir color, number 87. It's called Prune. Um, I think it's actually a pretty good match. That's a coincidence though. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing that. Um, we got Hermes red. This is the, that's where we wanna be, okay? So the light areas are gonna get Hermes red and then the darker areas are gonna get plum and we're gonna go from there, okay? Alrighty. Let's do it, okay? Just add the, oh yeah, it's a pretty good match. Okay, just adding that color in there. Add Hermes red. It's darkening a bit, but that's because the shade's really, really dry. These are really handy. Okay, application brushes. I don't use them often, but when I do, it's because I really, really need them. Just put a tiny dab, and you're just going to go down here. By... It's really good for the pinking, for the the broguing, everything, okay? So not a bad idea. Just a little tiny bit, just like that, and then just get on in there. Fine, let's get some of this out of there. Okay, since we're transforming the entire shoe, I am going to be changing the edges and re-dyeing them to a nice mahogany brown. Uh, black's great, uh, don't get me wrong, I really like black, but since the purpose of this video is to really make the shoe look different, I think brown's going to bring out that playfulness, it's going to bring out that more casual flair, and it's going to bring it all together really nicely, and I love burgundy shoes with brown edges, I think it looks really 
really beautiful and really stunning. Just use less dye than you think. You don't want it really spilling over and a brush is a good tool, so just be precise. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit more fun and I'm gonna dye the sole of the shoe a, a different color. Now this is something you do not have to do. Um, it's not permanent. As soon as you start walking, um, of course, the sole is going to wear down, and that's pretty much the end of your fun. But this is just something creative, something artistic, if that's what you're really about. And since, you know, we're changing color and doing fun stuff, I, I figured I might as well just add some some pop with the red, the purple, and the, the bright blue, just to get it looking really, really nice. Give it a more marble galaxy look. So just do it for fun. Totally not necessary, and it's not going to last. But since the shoe is more for display, it's more as a presentation piece, I thought it might as well just do it and show it off. So give it a try sometime. All right, we finally arrived at the last step, which is the mirror shine. And we're gonna be adding Pat Deluxe in multiple layers first. Like always, we're laying down those layers and then we're gonna start the shine afterward. Now, if you need a full unabridged tutorial about mirror shines, please check out my in-depth mirror shine tutorial that's really going to be helpful but for now i'm just doing this pretty quickly i'm laying down those layers i think i did about 10 to 15 layers and i waited about 10 to 15 minutes before i started shining but it's always going to come out really nice so i got a quick shine and and everything looks really really great so you'll see how it turned out but uh i'm really happy with how it looks and and the shine really resulted and, and happened really really quickly so Yay for that. Sometimes they take forever and it gets really frustrating. Okay, before I show you the final results, um, I want to show you a quick clip of something really fun that I did a couple of weeks ago. I actually visited uh, Alan Edmonds here in San Diego at the UTC Mall because my friend Henry was buying his first pair of Alan Edmonds. So he had to go into the store and get sized and I decided just to show you guys a quick clip of the video. Now, the reason why I did is because he ended up choosing some McAllisters, uh, which are the shoe featured in this video. So I thought might as well just put some more McAllister action so you guys can enjoy it. What's really funny though is that I've never actually really visited the Allen Edmonds store here in my own town. I always go to Costa Mesa for the Shell Cordovan trunk shows that you've seen me do, and I've never gone in and spoken to anybody at the store. So it was really cool to speak to Palmer Birch. He's the general manager there at the UTC location. He was just so awesome. He and his team really did a great job helping Henry pick out the right shoe for him. And what's really funny is that Henry and I are actually the same size. We're both eight triple E. So it was just a really funny coincidence, but uh, it, it was really awesome. So obviously Alan Edmonds isn't sponsoring today's video or anything like that. I just really wanted to give Palmer a shout out and to make sure to encourage anyone who's in town or in San Diego to go visit your local Alan Edmonds store and support them and uh, let them know you appreciate them. They did a fantastic job. And um, right here, Henry's wearing Park Avenues. That's what they had in stock. He had to order the McAllisters to be shipped to his house because of his unique size, which is eight triple E. It's a pain in the butt, but uh, it was awesome. And I got to go in there and they let me film and it was just a really, really awesome experience. And I'm glad I got to do that. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, if you've never been sized by Alan Edmonds, you should go in there and, and try it out. It's very, very cool. And you will end up getting a pair of shoes that actually fits you really, really well. So we got Henry a belt and uh, everything turned out <laughs> really, really great. In fact, uh, Henry won these shoes fair and square. Uh, we watched the Garcia versus Davis fight and he bet on Gervonta Davis, of course, and we were all rooting for Garcia. And he won and because he won, uh, our other friend Micah had to buy him a pair of Allen Edmonds. So congrats, Henry, you totally deserve them. And I hope you guys had a good time looking into you know, you're looking into this little segment of my life and uh, watching one of my friends get his first pair of Allen Edmonds. So enjoy this section and let's look at the final product here for today's video. All right, that's the before, black, nice, but not the color we want. And here is the after. 
okay. So I hope you like how they look. I am in love with this color. Beautiful burgundy, red, purple, brown tones. But just look at that color. I am so pleased. I am so happy. And the sole, of course, is for fun, but it, it makes it pop. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. I'm glad to be back. If you have any questions, please email me, message me, and all the pertinent info will be down in the description. Now, aside from the regular videos I'll be posting here on YouTube, I will see you every Friday at noon on Amazon Live for our weekly live stream where we can interact live, in person, in real time, and we can discuss different topics, and I'll demonstrate shoe shines and patinas. Remember to visit theeleganoxford.com for all your shoe care and Saphir needs. We carry Saphir's entire line, so if you'd like to support the channel, please visit our website. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am so happy and personally pleased with the results. This is one of the passion projects that I really think turned out well. So thanks for stopping by. I will see you next time.